9 p.m. Dundee. Sergeant George O'Donnell and PC Eddie Rankin are patrolling the Fintry area when a call comes in. There's a fire at the back of a local pub. The fire brigade are already tackling the blaze that started in a row of garages. Oh, no, no, no. Was it? How many was that? Like? I saw two laddies there, a uh, lassie with ginger hair. Two laddies, one of them had a Rangers top on. Right. And tracky bottoms, another of them had a light coloured t shirt on and tracky bottoms as well. Okay. Is this broken in there or what do you see them do? Yeah, like? It was just on the roof. I saw them setting right. the up at the fire. Right, okay. They were all making sure it was going right and all the rest of yeah. Touching the door to see those thoughts. Right, okay. So as soon as I heard the fire engine. Do you know, see, the, the kids may have started the fire. But the officer's priority is to contain the scene and protect the public. Aye, listen. Yeah, we're going to need to move this car out of here first, please. Then PC Rankin spots a youth fitting the description. This guy here has seen them on top, uh, top of the garage, and one of them standing behind us, apparently. Funny. But he doesn't want to turn around. No problem. Can, can, you, can you see the boy just like standing there? But the wee boy, the wee boy is handing down the road, please. Aye. He was on top of it. He was on top of it. Get here. off the road! How many times do you need to be told? Sergeant O'Donnell has already gone to check out the suspects. Which one? He says the one with the, the, one with the cap and the Henry Lloyd jumped on standing behind him with a blue polo shirt and a greasy hair. Right. Yeah. Was it two of them or one? This one. OK. Someone's about to get a surprise. How you doing, mate? All right, you're welcome. I'll sit in my car just now, OK? Because you've been detained, OK, just now. Come and sit with me. You're not you. I'm Come holding it. Me, yeah. now, right. In Scotland, unlike England and Wales, officers can't arrest individuals on suspicion alone, but they can detain suspects for up to six hours pending further inquiries that lead to an arrest. So, in the car he goes. From what we know at the moment, um, according to some of the witnesses who were here, there was a young guy, a 15-year-old, seen on the roof of the lockup when the fire took effect. We detained him at the time and initially he denied being anywhere in the vicinity. Then he admitted being on the roof and kicking some papers into the fire, which in effect means he was fueling the fire. And if he's fueling the fire, then he's as guilty of fire raising uh, as if he started the fire himself. The fire raising is the Scottish equivalent of arson in England. Uh, a lot of folk confuse the two, but up in Scotland we stick with fire raising, which is the main offence. I feel it's a lucky escape for everyone round about here, because as you can see, we'll have public house, it's a Friday evening, we've got what could be tos toxic fumes coming out of the garages, we'll have a, a safety issue, we'll have a property issue where further property could have been damaged. Overall, it's a fortunate end result. Two youths were arrested in connection with the fire. They were reported to the Procurator Fiscal, but no proceedings were taken. Sergeant O'Donnell and PC Rankin are back on the road again. Another call, another fire. This time, it's a little more serious. All the smoke at the moment on the right. It's a fire in a scrapyard. It's a report of two separate seats of fire. The concerns here at the moment would be any fuel that might be in any scrap vehicles or indeed any of the gas bottles, oxyacetylene and such like. The blaze can be spotted from miles away. Officers have been called in from all over Dundee. Any ideas? There's a couple of wee explosions when we came up, presumably some petrol tanks going on. Could be. Pretty self-contained, so there's no problem with traffic. No problem is obviously with uh, kids knocking about. I know for a fact they do have cutting equipment in there, gas bottles and such like. You hear the explosions just now, aye. The gas cylinders could blow at any time. Meanwhile, the public are gathering to enjoy the show. Stand on the pavement. In case any motors need to come up here. Eh? Boys and girls, on the pavement. I want to put on TV. I want you put on the pavement now, get there. They've got to be shifted and quickly. Charlie Lima 50 to ZS over. Police response is at the moment. Fire service are certainly in the yard trying to douse down what it would be clearly two separate seats of fire. Uh, update as and when there's any further information from 50 over. The blaze is getting worse. With the perimeter secure, Sergeant O'Donnell and the chief fire officer work out how they can get more water onto the blaze. Is there anything else you want us to do? Perhaps we stay out your way? You guys are looking for hiding down in Strathwarton Road. Maybe check it's up getting in the way of traffic. Or vice versa. Yeah. Traffic getting in the way of the hydrant. The nearest fire hydrant is across a busy road. It's vital the traffic doesn't burst a fire hose and cut the supply. Have you got any ramps to put over the hose? They need all the water they can get. Yeah, no problem, thanks. We'll stick a couple of signs out, Eddie. Just slow signs for the moment for that pipe going across the road. 
from Lima 50 asked a few minutes ago if there's anyone available to take up a point Patterson Street, Strathmartin Road any joy in getting any response please Hold on. the fire's still out of control here we go more fire crews arrive finally the extra hoses are having an effect but one dozy motorist could still cut the supply Sergeant O'Donnell decides he has to close off the whole road it would be helpful if we'd managed to close Strathmartin Street. The reason for that is that there's fire hydrant on the east side of Strathmartin Road. Uh, the pipes are coming for the hydrant. They've put blocks across it, but there's a fear that the vehicle's going to cross the blocks over the pipes. They're going to burst the pipes and hinder the fire being extinguished. Then extra help arrives. The scrapyard owner braves the heat to rip the fire apart. That and the increased water supply is enough to bring the blaze under control. Time now to check out how the fire began. They discover it started in two places. It certainly looks suspicious. I've spoken to the main fire officer. As soon as they move some of the scrap at the moment, they'll then be scaling down their own operation. Uh, from our side, what we'll be doing is then getting the police officers and the fire service together, trying to establish the cause of fire. Uh, we can have... Uh, fair guess at the moment, but we don't want to guess because guesswork isn't the best. We'll be doing it through uh, our own forensic team and the fire service team. We will get to the bottom of it and hopefully we'll, if it is someone who has been involved and the fire has been set deliberately, hopefully at the end of the day we'll be able to detect that as well. The investigation turned up a lot of leads that the officers are still pursuing.